one thing that you like or liked about Cleveland? I don't want to hear about your friends and stuff, but I mean like West Side Market or Mr. Jingling or Dorothy Fulltime, you know, Dorothy Fulltime, or just you know something that you really did Jane like. Scott. Or Jane Scott. Jane Scott. Well, okay. it was obviously Julian and Big Chuck. All right. All right. Oh, and, and then Ernie Anderson. And plus, the river caught fire all the time. <laughs> the only reason I ever go to Cleveland anymore is to see baseball games, and I love the Cleveland Indians, you know? All right. Keep walking. Don't fucking laugh, you know? Uh, <laughs> you, you, you. Hey, Bob Feller just died. Yeah, I know. Well, next year. I know. He was a yeah. prick, though. God damn it. He, he had just we had yeah. finally got him to <laughs> shut up about that. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Feller was a prick, you know? Who was cool was Herb Score? Rocky Calavito. Oh, right over here, yeah. too. Vic Davalito. <laughs> Stop. Oh, right. All right. All right. Oh, oh, you got Jello. Jello. Jello, I need to ask you I'm some questions. Okay, because I've Rocky got a Calavito bunch fan. for you, too. <laughs> Let's start with the ones for you first. Um, number one. Back in pre-punk hippie days, which I know you went through too, and I was living in Colorado, and the thing that nobody else was into, only a few people were imports from Europe, prog rock, kraut rock, and stuff like that. And the owner of a store in Denver told me in 76 or something that more of those are being sold in Cleveland than anywhere else in the United States. Yeah. Do you hold this in some way responsible for Rocket from the Tombs and the Mirrors and the Electric Eels and others? Well, that's a great question, and the thing is, um, you know, Cleveland goes back to what I said, you know, when people... Pure Ubu, too, you know, they, people uh, forgot. They, you know, you know, he can't get any good, he lives down the street from me, right? But, you know, bands like Cockney Rebel, Bebop Deluxe, can Roxy Music even. Roxy Music would, you know, um, the, the, all these obscure bands had markets in Cleveland. I mean, they could sell out, you know. I'm just, and, then, and then the other thing, too, was there was a record store there yeah. called The Drone. And oh, it's before uh, that. Before, before that, Record Rendezvous. Record, 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 record Rendezvous on Prospect. Yeah. And you could go down there and buy, like, um, uh, uh, the Iggy record, Metal KO on Sky, yeah. or you could buy Johnny Thunders, uh, which was an import. Um, but those yeah. bands used to play in Cleveland. See, like bands like uh, like David Bowie, the International David Bowie, Brian Kinchy had those da International David Bowie Society in Cleveland before he even came over here to play his first gig. His first gig in the United States yeah, was, was Cleveland, Cleveland. Was at Cleveland Public Hall. Brian, Brian Ferry, when I met Brian Ferry, he said, we thought we were going to take the states by storm, and we took San Francisco and Cleveland. Yeah, and Mata, Mata Two best one. cities. Oh, no, back yeah. to the Riviera. But, but you know, Mata Hoople was another one that came, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Cleveland, the, the market, that was the groundbreaking radio stations they had. But we got to see a lot of those bands that nobody yeah, else I got to see. I come from a place where we didn't get to see any of that. But uh, anyway, another question. Um, I don't know if you, any of you go into this in the book, but imagine my surprise when I found out after my band Dead Kennedys got a little ways off the ground, um, Ray Farrell, who went on to SST and Geffen and many other things, who worked at Rather Ripped Records, gave me all these compliments about an interview with my band in Clay magazine and of course we'd never done one so he shows me the magazine and I realize it's a completely different band called Dead Kennedy. You know what I, I was going to bring that my up. Band, I Dead was going to bring that up. There was a band in Cleveland and they later became called the Knee Cappers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, oh! I thought they were from the Niagara Falls. Yeah, one other thing too about uh, the, the Cleveland Dead Kennedys who became the Knee Cappers is that band was led Gosh. by a friend of all of ours who who's deceased sure, now, Gary Lupico, who was a fantastic studio guy and a great friend of all of ours. They, they called their band the Dead Kennedys, okay? And then you guys had your record come out. Like a single or something? California yeah. Morales. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I find it hard to believe around. anybody in Cleveland was cool. <laughs> The name Were Kennedy. we half as Were good as ball. crime in the bags? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they were pretty good. Their records not that good. 
because it's just like broken down tapes, live tapes, uh, board tapes, you know. But that's funny. That's I always oh, it's, wondered it's about if you to get funnier knew. too. In that the word I didn't probably make, you would call the Dead Kennedys first. I didn't make the name up. I wanted to call the band Thalidomide, and Ray and Klaus said no. So then I they suggested Dead Kennedys, and they were so offended by it. I knew that needed to be the name. Oh, that's so the most I ran name. out and told the Dills and Negative Trend and everybody else that's the name of the band, that's and then they the couldn't get rid of it. Name. But, but. I had heard about it from two people at a party in Colorado who both said, you know, that would be the ultimate band name. And yeah. they never used it, so I used it. And only in the last five years did one of them finally fess up and tell me that they had heard of the Cleveland Dead Kennedys. I never heard of them. You know, you know, when, when, when I, I heard about the Cleveland you were gone already. You, you guys were gone already. When I heard about the Cleveland already. Dead Kennedys, I had been sending money away and getting records from Nick from the Bizarros yeah, yeah, and uh, asked yeah. him, you know, he, he, knew, he knew me as Eric because I wasn't Jello Biafra yet and there anything. And um, I asked him, oh, I've started this band called Dead Kennedys and now there's one there. Is this going to be a problem? And then he wrote me back saying, no, the name all yours, they changed their name because they couldn't get gigs. Joe, I, I don't know what the dealio is out here, but in Cleveland, all them bars were owned by Irish. Yep, all of them. All of them. That and is so, exactly yep, what Gary And so the Dead Kennedys was a really fucking problematic name. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket from the Tombs is a great name. Well, it was originally Rocket from the Crib. What happened with that? And then we said, yeah, you know, two, you know, Crib said them sound right. <laughs> the rumor I heard was that the Cleveland Dead Kennedys changed their name to Public Enemy of all things. Uh, it was the kneecappers. I heard uh, kneecappers uh, later. Public Enemy was a cool Public little Enemy. band, and they had how you say gold teeth. A lot of <laughs> a lot of personal problems. The funny thing was, well, with, with the Rocket from the Crypt is I, I finally met a couple of those guys down in San Diego when Rocket from the Tombs played there on our reunion tour. And he goes, hey man, I'm the guy from, you know, from Rock and the Crypt. And I said, wow, cool. What are you guys changing your name to? <laughs> <laughs> and what has it become of the guy from the Bizarros? I talked to him about five years ago. He's, I, he's like, he's good. Like, straight job, like insurance or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I've talked to Nick a number of times because, uh, my record labels attempted to uh, license uh, those releases for re-release, and uh, he's he's a nice enough guy, but uh, he's just not interested in uh, ever reissuing those records. And uh, actually, a number of bands that recorded there um, have had releases since then on Small Vale, including Tin Huey, The Rubber City Rebels, Teacher's Pet. We did a reissue of, which is really a fantastic record, and. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there, but Bob, you had a record on Clone Records, didn't you? Yeah.